And the part of it that we're working on here is the tree breeding, the tree improvement. Or, and the technique we're using is a classical plant breeding technique. It's called back crossing. The, uh, the idea is that the genes for blight resistance are present in the Asian chestnut species, in the Chinese chestnut, the Japanese chestnut, the other kinds of chestnut trees that grow in Asia. The genes for blight resistance are inherited from, you know, from the parent to the, to the offspring. And also when we make a hybrid, when we make a, an, a hybrid chestnut, an interspecific hybrid between an Asian species and the American species, some of those genes for blight resistance are passed to the, to the children. So if we start with, a, with, the, with the, first, the first generation of, of hybrids, which plant breeders call the F1 generation, they would be 50-50 Chinese American, and they would be intermediate in blight resistance. And the, one explanation for that is that the, uh, the genes for blight resistance are incompletely dominant. In other words, we can, we can see in the heterozygote, the plant that inherited a, a, a gene for resistance from one parent, but a, a gene for susceptibility from the other parent, they would be at an intermediate level of, of blight resistance. And so that's the hypothesis we were working on. Um, when I take those intermediately blight resistant plants and intercross them to grow the grandchildren, which we call the F2 generation, the second generation, um, some of those grandchildren will inherit the blight resistance genes from both parents. Um, and so this is the hypothesis then that the homozygous uh, uh, individuals in that population of grandchildren will be as resistant as their Asian grandparent was. And we can, uh, we can detect them when we screen in the field, when we screen our seedlings in the field. We typically grow the seedlings for four or five years in, a, in an orchard environment before we challenge them with the chestnut blight. Those trees that are resistant can be advanced to a back cross generation um, by crossing them with the American parent. And the reason we do that is to dilute out the Asian genes. Um, it turns out that the American chestnut was very well adapted to the Appalachian forest. The Chinese chestnuts and the Japanese chestnuts not very well adapted. They just don't grow here very well. They will grow in an orchard in the full sun, but in the shade and the competition of the Appalachian forest, they don't persist. So the adaptive characters that are in the American chestnut then are recovered by backcrossing our hybrids to the American species. In that way, every backcross generation dilutes the Chinese genes by one half. So the result of the first backcross is a tree that would be about three quarters American, one quarter Chinese. And those trees then are grown in an orchard and screened. And those that exhibit some resistance are advanced to the next generation. Most of them are not, though. Most of the backcross trees have a very low or no level of resistance and they are eliminated from the breeding population. Only about one out of every eight backcross trees is selected to advance to the next backcross generation. So those selections then are crossed again to the American species, which dilutes the Chinese part again by half. So the second backcross, or the BC2 individuals then as a family, as a group of trees, these are all siblings, they would average about seven-eighths American and one-eighth Chinese. And again, they're grown for four or five years. They're challenged with the fungus. We select the best individuals, advance them to the third backcross generation. We end up with a tree that is 15 sixteenths. Now, it's not the individual tree that's 15 sixteenths at a generational level. They would average 15 sixteenths. Uh, now, consider those 15 sixteenths third backcross trees. One of their parents, either the mother or the father, depending on which direction we make the cross, was a American chestnut tree. So they will have inherited susceptibility from that parent. So when we select those trees for blight resistance, the best we can hope for is an intermediate level blight resistance.
when the third backcross trees are selected, we can intercross them to create a third backcross F2. Those third backcross F2 trees will be, on average, 15 16 American, so they're mostly American. They will grow and look like an American chestnut tree. Some of them will inherit the blight resistance of their Chinese or other or Japanese ancestor. They should be as fully resistant as the Asian species. Those trees, these third backcross F2 trees, are allowed to interpollinate one another. So they are intercrossing by open pollination. We can harvest the seeds from this seed orchard then to test in the forest. So those are the trees, the B3 F3s. This is now, I know the jargon is a little bit complicated, but this is the third back cross. So they're 15 16 American on average. And it's the F3 generation, which means we've done two levels of intercrossing and selection.